Well, hi there. Let me tell you some things that I love. I love reptiles. I love snakes. I love black snakes. I love wild type snakes. I love the genus Pitophis, the bull, gopher, and pine snakes. And this, unsurprisingly, is a snake that I adore. This is a black pine snake. This is my black pine snake, Lord Vader. And I love him. Lord Vader was a gift from a wonderful family that frequently visits the room. Lord Vader got his name because, well, he's the right color. And, like many pits, he used to be very hissy. So he made the right sounds. He also used to be exceedingly bitey. But as you can probably tell, that no longer describes him. He's pretty much Anakin from Return of the Jedi now. Anyway, if I had to describe him now, I would say that he is glorious beyond all description. I mean, look at his color. He's so black that he makes my black African house snake look like a gray African house snake. And yet you can see, if you look very carefully, especially by his tail, that he has evidence of pattern. At one point, his ancestors were patterned snakes. These are a naturally occurring melanistic population. And though he no longer shows much of that pattern due to being basically midnight black, he still has this rad pituophis head shape. And while being a reasonably sized jet black snake, he is much less likely to try to eat you or himself than some of the other rad reasonably sized black snakes. He's amazing. But is he a good pet? And is the black pine snake the best pet snake for you? To figure this out, we're going to need to give the black pine snake a score based upon our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. It is true that we've done a score for Pituophis snakes generally, but this is not your typical pit. Well, not in all ways, certainly. So, how will their score compare to the 4.0 that we gave to the group as a whole? Let's find out. When it comes to handleability, we give the black pine snake a score of 4 out of 5. Now, I should say that these are a wonderful snake to handle, but they can be very intimidating. A black pine snake cannot hurt you in any significant way. And the reality is that no snake under 15 feet has a chance of winning a fight with a human. If you want to stomp a rattlesnake to death, there is nothing that the rattlesnake can do to stop you. It could envenomate you, so maybe you'll die tomorrow, but that is little consolation for the snake that is stomped to death today. Snakes will hide from you, often by holding still and relying on their camouflage. If they can't hide, they will run. If they can't run, they will get as big, loud, and scary as they can, hoping that you will leave them alone. And only if that doesn't work will they bite you. Well, it turns out that this genus of snakes excels at being big, loud, and scary. They don't have much bite to back up that bluff, but they sure can put on a good show. They stand up tall with their heads flared and their mouths open. They make a very loud hissing sound. And they even rattle their tails. It's frequently reported that they do this to mimic rattlesnakes, but I really doubt that's what's going on. Snakes all over the world rattle as part of their defensive display, but rattlesnakes have only ever existed in the Americas. I suspect that rattling simply works as part of a defensive display, and rattlesnakes have an adaptation that makes them exceptionally good at it. And since they are so good at alerting us to their presence, humans are bitten by rattlesnakes at a much lower rate than by their much quieter cousins, the copperheads. Unfortunately, instead of saying thank you when they let us know that we are uncomfortably close, we often kill these snakes when they rattle, which selects for snakes that don't rattle. So we are observing that rattlesnakes are now less likely to rattle than they were in the past, meaning that people are now more likely to walk right into one, which is the best way to be bitten by a rattlesnake without trying to pick one up or attack it. Then those are actually the best ways to get yourself bitten. 
I guess just in case you're looking for a new story in a big hospital bill. Anyway, black pine snakes are great at being big and scary. They will even mock strike, but they're fairly reluctant to bite. This one was an exception. But look at him now. If you put in the time and know what you're doing, and our video can help with that, then they can be excellent to handle. They're a great size for adults and even older children to handle. They do get considerably larger than Lord Vader here. He's still young. Just um, keep an eye on this region right here of the snake. If it's bulbous and soft, don't point the vent at anything you love until tomorrow. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who are hopefully going to make something amazing happen because this guy over here, come on over, come on over. We always keep him in the corner. You can't always see him, but this guy here, <laughs> this is Matt Jepson. And he is simultaneously one of the nerdiest and coolest people I've ever met. And he goes on these absolutely incredible expeditions all over the world to find the coolest reptiles anywhere. And he has agreed to take me to the Peruvian Amazon, something we would never be able to do if it weren't for the support of you guys at Patreon. We're gonna be able to bring you some, is it gonna be rad content? It's always rad in the Amazon. It's gonna be some rad content because it's always rad in the Amazon. And it's all thanks to you guys. Thank you so much. If you'd like to support us in doing amazing new things like this, or if you'd just like to see some of the cool features we have, please consider checking us out on Patreon. When it comes to care, we give the black pine snake a score of five out of five. Honestly, when it comes to care, most snakes are great. They're easy to house. They're easy to feed, unless feeding frozen thawed rodents to other animals is a deal breaker, which it totally could be. But care is simple, and these snakes are no exception. They need an enclosure with a good lid that favors ground space over height, as this is a predominantly ground-dwelling species. That said, they will climb, so feel free to give them opportunities to climb a bit. Almost any snake substrate will work. Of course, like with all snakes, avoid cedar or pine beddings. Give them constant access to water. Feed them an appropriately sized rodent diet about weekly, perhaps more often for hatchlings and juveniles. Hides on both the cold and warm ends of the enclosure will be greatly appreciated. And I want to take a minute to be really clear about heating, since heat can actually be far more dangerous than cold, unless we're talking about freezing temperatures. Snakes and most other reptiles should have access to heat. Most need this heat to warm their bodies so that they can digest food and perform other essential functions. But too much heat can kill them, just like it can kill you. That is why you should put your heat source on a thermostat. But also, while basking at 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 35 degrees Celsius, or roughly 308 kelvins, feels nice for a bit, if you can't escape from those temperatures, eventually such temperatures might kill you. The same goes for your snake. So provide proper basking temperatures at one extreme end of the enclosure, but ensure that temperatures are much cooler at the opposite end. I verify regularly with a temperature gun like this one. This range of available temperatures will allow your snake to maintain an ideal body temperature instead of simply being forced to endure whatever temperature is present in the enclosure. When it comes to hardiness, we give the black pine snake a score of five out of five. It isn't that you can't kill one. Again, excessive heat or prolonged extreme cold could do it. You could smash one, starve one to death, or deny it water. But if you get a baby that is feeding regularly and give it proper care, it should do very well. When it comes to availability, we give the black pine snake a score of two out of five. There is a problem. These guys come from the longleaf pine forests of the southeastern United States. These forests have been greatly reduced in both size and number by human activity. This means that the wild population of black pine snakes has diminished in size considerably, and they're frequently in discussion for various levels of federal protection. Functionally, what this means is that like eastern indigos, it can be difficult to move these guys across state lines. This means that you need to know of a breeder in your state, generally speaking. Fortunately for me, Envy Exotics here in Utah produces these beauties. Unfortunately for me, I am still on their wait list to get one. I should get a girl from them this year. 
Should I name her Padme? Amidala? Dorothy Vader? Anyway, depending on where you live, it may be exceedingly difficult to get your hands on one. Not harder than an Eastern Indigo, but similarly difficult. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Black Pine Snake a score of 4 out of 5. For a dark black snake, these aren't all that expensive. Most black morphs of animals like boas and ball pythons are very expensive. Indigo snakes are also very expensive and hard to get. Even black king snakes have become fairly spendy of late. And while this snake is no bargain, for a captive bred black snake, they're not insanely expensive either. They are one of the most expensive wild type pits, but I also think that makes sense since they're not only rare, but are also arguably the most beautiful of the wild type pits. Probably not quite as glorious as an indigo snake, but without most of the downsides of an indigo. Other than the snake itself, costs are fairly normal for a larger colubrid snake. You'll need an enclosure that is relatively large with a good lid. That enclosure should favor ground space over vertical space. But it could be PVC, wood, glass, basically any material that you see used regularly for enclosures. Just make sure that it's escape proof. If it can be front entry, that will make it less stressful for the snake when you get it out since you will be less of an eagle. You can use a wide range of substrate types, honestly virtually any substrate that's used for snakes. Provide a water bowl and hides in a warm spot on a thermostat. These guys do not require UVB, but I'm becoming more and more convinced that it's a good idea for almost all reptiles. And that's pretty much it. And this is why we give the black pine snake an overall score of 4.0 out of 5. The exact same score we gave the pits as a whole. And the reality is that the black pine snake both deserves and does not deserve the same score. In most ways, it is the same. But it is harder to get and more expensive than other members of the genus. Pits as a whole deserve a 2 for availability, but almost a 3. And for upfront costs, they deserve a four, but almost a five. Black pine snakes also deserve a two for availability, but like Eastern Indigos, they almost deserve a one. And for upfront costs, they cost more than many other pits, but not enough to warrant a three. So this is just some of the nuance that you miss on a five point scale. But subjectivity would be a much bigger issue if I was trying to be more precise in my scoring. So just know that this is the same score as the rest of the genus, but with an asterisk. They're worse. But in the ways that really count, they're just as good, and in my opinion, they are the coolest members of an already absolutely rad group. If what you want is a rad black snake that won't break the bank or try to eat itself, or you, then the black pine snake might just be the best pet snake for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. <laughs> he told me you killed him. No. I, I am, am your father. No! <laughs> That's not true! It's impossible! <laughs>